What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's video I'm going to be giving you a quick tip for creating a logo with overlapping letters in Adobe Illustrator. All right guys, so we're gonna jump right into Adobe Illustrator here and create a new document that is 1200 by 1200 RGB and one artboard and hit create. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my text tool and we're just gonna type out a few letters here. I'm going to type out the letters D-O-C. All right, and from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the font to good old Gotham. It's got some nice rounded edges and maybe let's change it from bold to medium. So from here, hold down the Shift and Alt Option keys and drag out from any of the four corners to scale it up. And then hold the Alt Option and Shift keys while dragging to create a copy off to the side. Now that's going to be our copy just in case we screw things up. Always good to have a backup. So for this part, I'll select the text and just press Command Shift O to create outlines. Or you can come up to where it says Type up here and choose Create Outlines from the menu. Now, once you've done that, we also need to come up to the object menu and ungroup these letters. That way we can move them around independently of one another. And what I'm going to do from here is hold down the shift key and just drag the D over so that it lays on top of the O and do the same thing with the C. Hold down shift and this time drag it to the left. I'm going to zoom in a bit and I just want to make sure that the gaps are about even here. So I'm just going to drag in a couple of guides and just tap the C over a little bit so that it looks like the gap is the same on both of these. All right, and maybe I'll have it come in a little bit more on both sides, like that, and we are good to go. Let me just show you guys something really quick. I'm going to actually press M to get my rectangle tool and drag a square behind these letters. Now, I'm just going to leave it filled with black and send it to the back by coming up to the object menu and choosing Arrange Send to Back, and then lock it by pressing Command 2, or coming up to the object menu and choosing Lock Selection. Now, once you've done that, you can't select the background anymore, but you can select your letters by clicking and dragging around them. So, I'm going to grab my eyedropper and just sample some of this white so that our text is now inverted. We have white letters on a dark background. So hopefully you guys are with me so far. What we're gonna do from here is select letter C and press Command C to copy it and Command F to paste it in front. Then I'll press D on the keyboard to get my default colors and I'm gonna select the stroke color here and just drag it to the fill so that we have this dark gray color for both. Now select the stroke, make sure that's in the front and come over here to the stroke panel and change the weight to let's say about 12, that'll create a pretty nice thick outline for us. And if I move it off to the side there you can still see the original white copy below. So what I want to do from here is come up to the object menu and choose expand. Make sure fill and stroke are both checked off and hit OK and then let's open our Pathfinder from the window menu. Alright once you have the Pathfinder open we're gonna go ahead and choose merge which is the third icon in from the left on the bottom row. And we'll hit that once, and that's basically going to merge our stroke and our fill into one shape. Now, from here, I actually want the C to kind of overlap here. So what I'm going to do is click and hold on my eraser tool in the toolbar and make sure that you select the knife. Now, once you have the knife selected, I'm going to cut through here and once here. Now, that's just going to slice this apart. So if you press A to get your direct selection tool, click on this bottom piece, hold down shift and click on this top piece and hit delete. And you can now see how this bottom gray piece is just laying over the C. All right, so what I can do from here is hold down the shift key and select the O behind it and now come back up to the pathfinder and choose merge. Once again, press A to get your direct selection tool, click on the gray shape and press delete. And there you go, that's the basic idea for creating this kind of effect. But now, on the top, we actually want the O to overlap the C. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is grab the O. It looks like there's some lines in here. So let me just move my cursor over that and delete those lines. So I'm going to select the letter O, the white copy, press Command C, Command F to paste it in front, grab my eyedropper by pressing I and sampling some of this black from the background, 
And then I'm going to click and drag my fill to the stroke, come over here to the stroke panel, and set it to about 12 points. Now we're going to do the same thing as before, we come up to the object menu and choose expand. Make sure fill and stroke are checked off and hit OK. And then from the pathfinder we can go ahead and choose merge. Now, just like before, you should have a copy in front and a copy in back. So grab your knife tool and slice through the top and through the right, leaving only the areas that you want to overlap. So, now I can grab this piece in the front, hold down shift and select the C behind it, and choose Merge. Go ahead and switch back to your direct selection tool by pressing A, select the black piece, and then delete it. So now, you have this cool effect where the O is coming in the front here, and the C is overlapping the O on the bottom. So let's go ahead and create that same effect, except maybe we'll have the O overlap on the bottom this time, and the D overlap on the top. Okay, hopefully you guys are with me so far. Once you kind of see this in action, it's actually quite easy. So go ahead and copy the D, press Command F to paste it in front, sample the black here to get that color, create a fill, and we're just going to add a nice bold outline to it come up to object and hit expand, then hit OK, merge it, and grab your knife tool. Now again, we want the D to overlap on the top, so we're going to put a slice through here and through here, leaving only that top segment. Now select that segment, oops, first we want to get rid of any funky lines in here. I'm just grabbing that with my direct selection tool and deleting it. Now press V to get your regular selection tool, select both of these, and choose merge, and then just delete it with your... All right, select both of these shapes here, and then choose Merge. Select the black piece, hold down Shift and click on the white behind it, and then choose Merge, grab your direct selection tool, and delete it. Oh, but what's going on there? We don't see our cutout here. I think what we did is actually we have two copies of this circle. So I'm just going to lock that for a second by pressing Command 2, and it looks like we do have two copies. Just going to delete that one. All right, but there we go, and we just have one more segment to cut out. So let's unlock that by coming up to the object menu and choosing Unlock All. And this time we're going to select the O and kind of repeat the same thing. At this point, though, our O is kind of broken into two shapes on the top and the bottom. So let's just go ahead and ungroup it. Now I can select the top shape and the bottom shape separately. For this part though, we just need the bottom, so select it, press Command C, Command F. And one last time guys, let's just repeat those steps. Drag the fill color to the stroke, increase the weight to about 12 points, and then come up to Object and expand it. Hit OK, merge it, and now grab your knife tool. And we're just going to cut here and here. Delete these other two pieces with the direct selection tool. Press V on the keyboard, select this top shape, hold down the shift key, and then we're going to select the letter D. And then we'll come back up to merge, hit merge, grab your direct selection tool, and delete it. Alright, so there you go guys, that's pretty much the effect. Now, the reason why I put it on a black background is so that I could show you guys how this looks. But basically, if I remove this background now, this should be all one shape. Okay, so I should be able to change the color, but as you can see, there's still a few kind of lines in here. So let's just clean this up really quick. Let's say I just wanted to make this a solid blue color. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see what's kind of happening here. First of all, it's not actually changing the colors to what I want. So I'm gonna come up to window and swatches and maybe choose one of these instead. There you go. Illustrator's a little stubborn sometimes. So now I'm just going to delete that extra shape in there. Select all three of these letters and hit merge one more time from the pathfinder. Alright, so now we can treat this as one shape, one color, and you can use it on either a light or a dark background like here. Alright, and we've got our live type, which I usually just kind of put on a layer of its own if I need it. But that's basically the idea, guys. That's how you create an overlapping text effect that you can use on logos, on title treatments, and so much more. So if you guys want to check out some of our other Illustrator videos, I have an Adobe Illustrator Basics video series, which you guys can watch totally free on the Teach Me to Design YouTube channel. 
And if you're somebody who is interested in learning more about logos and branding, be sure to check out our brand you course, guys. It's over at teachmetodesign.com slash brand you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.